right, let's do this. Good morning, all. Um, it is Friday, September 18th, and this is Mass Creative's Virtual Policy and Action Update. Um, so the 37 of us who are on this call, you get the pleasure of being among the first to virtually meet Mass Creative's new Director of Engagement and Organizing, G. Um, G, could you say hi and introduce yourself? Hi. Um, I'm Tree, well, spell T-R-I, but you can just call me G, and I'll be the new person working with many of you. Yeah, we're really excited to have G on board um, to lead our grassroots organizing and um, advocacy strategy, um, and we've uh, been We've been plotting together um, and continuing to work on a couple of mass creative initiatives, including this morning's briefing. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, great, so we're gonna start with a federal update. So two weeks ago, or maybe, excuse me, it was just last week, the Senate introduced a skinny bill, which was a 1.5 trillion um, relief bill meant to be the fourth stimulus bill for, to respond to COVID-19. It failed to pass directly along party lines. Um, and it had nothing really that would be of particular use to the creative community or to our cities and towns that are so desperately in need of federal aid um, to help make us liquid, right? And, and to help relieve us. So it's frustrating. It is absolutely frustrating to see how um, Congress is continuing to not sort of move forward on this. Um, we do know that we have a congressional delegation in Massachusetts that is paying attention to this and is really working hard to pass a stimulus bill that is inclusive of all of our needs, um, but it is very unclear and it is pretty unlikely, says Emily, not the, the, the larger whole, but it is pretty unlikely that a fourth stimulus bill will pass before November 3rd. Um, so that is just a reality that we are, we are continuing to live with. Um, the other thing, so a couple of other bills, there has been no movement on the Restart Act or the SOS, the Save Our Stages bills, um, but there continues to be advocacy around those. You can find more of that on our website. Um, the one, there's another bill that I wanted to just briefly talk about. So Be an Arts Hero, which is a intersectional artist-led um, or a, a coalition working to really advance and advocate for individual artists and creative workers has um, put together the Dawn Act, Defend Arts Workers Now, um, and it includes, it, 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 it is a $43.5 billion um, fund that would be, that's proportionate, proportionate to the creative economy's share of GDP, um, but it would it would be allocated to all of the federal agencies that work with creative workers to distribute. Um, so it's the NEA, NEH, IMLS, Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and the Small Business Administration. Um, this is, it's just to note, this is not a bill yet. Um, <clears throat> it is a proposal that they want to make a bill. And we put in the chat box, I believe, a link to Be an Arts Hero and, the Don, and more information on the Dawn Act. And they have a letter that you can co-sign to, um, to the Senate, to senators writ large, um, in support of making this a bill and moving this forward. Um, so we, those, that's another bill that we are monitoring or work we're monitoring here at Mass Creative. So then moving along, the other big thing um, on the federal level is the Getting Creative Workers Working Policy Proposal. Um, so under this, this is a policy proposal that was sort of gathered and put together by Americans for the Arts with input from a very large um, collection of folks in the creative sector. Um, it has 15 recommendations under these five categories, um, and it is a proposal to the next administration um, on how they can get creative workers working. Um, it is, I think, a really great inclusive document. Um, it is it, it gives some specifics and then also says like, here's the area that you need to develop more policy in. Um, so far over tw uh, 1,200 folks have endorsed it. That's between organizations, associations, and individuals. And um, Mass Creative has signed on as an endorser. And I heartily recommend um, folks sign on to, or take a look at it and consider signing on. Um, it, it is, I think, a very necessary piece 
of um, policy work that's happening on the federal level. It has been delivered to the Biden-Harris campaign, and it is about to be delivered to the Trump-Pence campaign. Okay, so that is my federal update. Now for the state. So let's start with the budget, right? So we know that there is the 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 legislature um, passed and Governor Baker signed a three month spending plan that will end in October 31st. This is basically level funding um, to keep the, the, the doors of state government open. So to this week, Chair Rodericks, who is um, the chair of House Ways, or sorry, Senate Ways and Means, um, delivered some remarks. And, and the estimate is, is that we are about $5 billion below our tax revenues from last year. And that's a real problem. Um, while we are still, we're seeing, you know, it's, it's, as economists have been described to me, it's either our economy is gonna be a V or it's gonna be a U. And it's a question of how wide that U is going to be. And there was some um, earlier this week or earlier this month, there was some indications that the economy is rebounding, but the tax collections are not rebounding as fast as we need them to and are still below last year. So they are saying, Roderick said, we're going to need to dig deeply into the $3.5 billion rainy day fund. And I think this is a good indicator of what we're going to have to expect and anticipate as the legislature works towards whatever fiscal year 21 budget they're going to do. Um, there is some question as to whether or not by the by October they're going to pass another three-month spending plan, a six-month spending plan, or a full to the end of the um, to the end of the fiscal year uh, spending plan. So we're continuing to monitor it. We are in talks regularly with the Mass Cultural Council um, about how we are going to advance a strategy to make sure that the creative community's allocation and public investment in the arts um, is still a part of that budget. So that is in process. Um, the other update is, is that the Economic Development Bond Bill, which we all worked so hard on over the summer, is in conference committee and the con conferees are meeting. Um, we've sent along a, a, a letter request, formally requesting that they retain all the provisions for arts and culture that are included in that bill. Um, and our, we still, our letter to, if you want to write to your um, senators and your representatives, is still open and available on our website. The other big thing that happened this week is Senator Lovely um, introduced a phase four tax relief bill. And so this is basically allowing businesses that would have to pay real estate tax um, that are part that are included in phase four, they there's an abatement so they can they can uh, push off paying that real estate tax that's owed to the state. Um, it's already been referred to the Revenue Committee. It is not technically a bill yet. It is still a docket. So you see SD, that means it's a docket, not a bill. Um, but it's getting a little bit of traction. The, the reason I include this is, is that um, what the coverage on this bill keeps talking about theaters that are included in phase four. And yes, there, there are some live venues, live arts venues that are included in phase four, but we also know there are quite a number that are included in phase three, step two, that are still without ability to open. So we're monitoring this and seeing what's possible. We also recognize that um, the issue of real estate tax for uh, businesses is not one that nonprofits generally need to concern themselves with, but in this moment we are thinking about the entire creative community and we know that there are private arts groups that do fall into this category and we want to make sure that they're getting um, covered and getting the relief that they need to. So more on that as it happens. Uh, on the municipal front, I had shared two on our last call some work we were doing um, to support local leadership, um, advocacy leadership in Somerville, and there's also some in Cambridge. Um, and I'm really happy to report that uh, earlier this week, the group in Somerville was invited to a arts community town hall with the mayor, where the mayor announced a $500,000 COVID arts relief grant fund and a promise to continue to meet with the arts community. Um, mayor Curtitone, as well as uh, staff, city staff, also introduced a number of other items that are um, coming up. Uh, in terms of a zone, uh, 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 excuse me, a creative space audit and a, a zoning task force that's coming along to work and support the creative community. Um, and it was great to hear about those things. But what I think is even greater is that in both Somerville and Cambridge, 
um, local um, artist-led advocacy was the reason that these things happened. So in Cambridge, um, there was a petition of over 600 signers, as well as some significant communication to city councilors, the mayor and the city manager about the need to include art artists and arts groups in the city's COVID relief fund. Um, the city council had a city council meeting this week and they passed the resolution to include it. Neither of these things, these efforts or things in these cities would have happened without the, um, the real fortitude and the leadership of local artists and, and activists. And so um, Mass Creative played a very tiny role in that in terms of providing some resources to, make, to set up and stand up those petitions. But it is, this is the kind of work that is so exciting and is so needed. Um, and Mass Creative will help support any municipal-based or local-based advocacy efforts um, that come along and, and as is appropriate. So give me a shout, give G a shout, um, and we will, we will see how we can share our resources to make our work stronger together. Um, next, I want to talk about the cre about create the vote. So, um, over what was it? The the a report was 1.7 million um, voters in Massachusetts participated in the Massachusetts primary. That is extraordinary and phenomenal, and is due to a lot of advocacy to get the vote out and to make sure that um, voters in Massachusetts understood how they could safely vote. Um, and that their votes would be counted. And so that's not just the work of the Create the Vote Coalition and partners. Um, it is the work of a lot of voting advocates. And I just want us to cheer and celebrate because there's been a lot going on, but we are, we're moving the needle. So, but we're not going to let off on the gas. So the census ends September 30th. That's when all census collection efforts or data collection efforts will end. Um, we in Massachusetts are below our response rate from the 2010 census. This is a big problem. Um, and as I've talked about before, we know that the census is directly linked to how federal resources are allocated. It is also directly linked to how um, district lines and, and seats um, for elected officials are are drawn. And so um, it is a real, it's really, really necessary that we make sure that we get a complete count. Um, we also know that this year, um, the census has been politicized in a way that it has never been in the past, or uh, in, more than it has been in the past. Um, and so it is really important that we make sure that um, our networks and our communities know that it is safe to take the census and it is important to take the census. Um, the other piece is, is that next Tuesday is National Voter Registration Day. Um, so we at Mass Creative and with the Create the Vote Coalition are gonna be pushing to make sure that everyone who's eligible to vote is registered to vote in Massachusetts. And then also that we, in this year, we're also making our voting plan for November 3rd. And so this is where I just wanna push some actions that you all can take. So first, complete the census. And then um, if you haven't yet, request your vote by mail ballot. Um, if you applied and got a, or a vote by mail ballot for the primary, you will automatically get your general election ballot. But if you have not yet applied, you please do so. Um, and we put some links in the chat box to, on how to do that. And then it's not just about us as individuals, it's about us as a community. So ask yourself, who are your five? Who are the five people that you are going to, in your network, in your sphere of influence, that you're going to share the importance of the census with, that you're going to make sure that they are um, taking the census and, and sharing it with their five? And then who are the five people to, um, that you're going to get to register to vote or to request that your ma their mail-in ballot so that we have a really, um, what's the word I'm looking for this morning? Um, we have a very active uh, November 3rd election. So that is my update. I just also wanted to say that, um, you know, we're in real, and you all know this, you're dealing with this every day in your organizations and with your communities. We're in uncharted territory, and that's the case with the legislature. And so unlike past years when the fall is relatively quiet in terms of legislative activity, we know it's going to be a different story. And so um, while the updates aren't probably as robust as we would think they are, or as, as they've been in the past this um, for this call, uh, 
we can anticipate and expect that there's going to be a lot more activity and we're going to need to respond to that um, together to make sure that our voices are heard um, and that we are getting the things that we need for our sector to survive. So um, I promise more to come and I'm so glad that we are all in this together. Um, a reminder, our next update will be on October 2nd. There's a link in the chat box where you can register right now. Um, I want to thank you all for your time this morning and uh, I hope you have good weekends and I hope you get some time outside. Fall is starting and uh, I'm, I'm ready for it. So thank you all and uh, see you soon.